So look, if you want to grow your wealth, your income, and increase the amount of time off, then these are the shortcuts that can help. Welcome to the Wealth Creation Podcast. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's Dan. I hope you're well this fine Tuesday morning. Uh, so in this podcast, we're going to talk about property, and we're going to talk specifically about how we grew the multi-million pound property portfolio over the last 20 years. I look back at this journey, and I'm like, was that me? It's um, quite interesting that it doesn't feel like it's me. It's like a film that I watched or a book that I read, uh, but it is me. And uh, when we first started off on this journey, it took me about four years, in fact, to actually get my first uh, property deal. Good morning, Andy. So the reason why it took me four years is that I just had so many people around me saying, don't do it, don't buy it, you will regret it. Uh, My friend did it, we put pizza boxes on the wall, dreadful, yeah. So it took me four years of persuading myself over and above everybody else that was persuading me not to do it. So so that's like the first step, the very, very first step. And especially now, people are going, oh, you know, now's the wrong time to invest in property. No, 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 no. The first time was 20 years, and the next greatest time is now, right? Or 10 years ago, or now, or tomorrow. Like, you've got to get in the game. And I see people and they're overanalyzing deals and nothing stacks up, nothing works out. I've got to tell you that if you don't get into property, in 20 years' time, you'll be looking back and be going, damn, damn, I should have been doing that. And, and you're right, you should. <laughs> Let me just clarify. I'm not here to make you feel good about yourself. You're right, you should. So, But people didn't because we're overanalyzing deals. We've had um, strategy calls with people coming on going, there's just no deals out there. Dude, there's deals everywhere. You know, the, as uh, Dolph DeRue said in his, his book, uh, his Rich Dad Poor Dad book, uh, the deal of a century comes around about once a week. And when we were prolific at buying property, we were buying all sorts of deals. And we're doing all sorts of stuff to these deals, okay? So the deals are out there. They were out there 20 years ago, and they're out there now. We had a deal going back maybe six months ago now, and it was 30 grand down, and it paid pay £1,000 a month for the rest of your life. And I remember I put that out on Facebook, and I was going, scam, that's impossible, blah, blah, blah. This was just a normal property that you could find on right move, but it, it was it wasn't below market value. There was nothing special about it. You had to do about six, seven thousand pounds worth of work to it. That was it, convert it to a HMO. But this thing would have stacked up and paid you. It was just slightly less than a thousand pounds. It was like 970 quid every single month for the rest of your life till the day you die, as long as you're remortgage it in 25 years or whatever or you pay the mortgage down but these deals are out there right now they're out there and they're out there 20 years ago we saw a deal going back maybe five years ago and it was um six bed sits for like a hundred thousand pounds in total six bed bed sits it was in doncaster i think and i think it was maybe 80 90 or 100 grand we'll call it 100 grand now all of them needed refurb okay now think about this like you're picking up stuff for I can't even do the maths on this. Uh, Seventeen thousand pound each per bed sit times three hundred pound a month um, for um, LHA or DSS. Like for, that's what eighteen hundred pounds a month. So in in year one, it, it, well, let's put it this way: in year one, you would have made what about twenty two grand, and by year two, you would have paid everything off plus your refurb costs. These deals are out there. You just got to look for them. Like they might not be the ideal kind of tenants, by the way, you know, in, in the wrong area. But these deals are out there um, and you can decide which tenants you want to put in there. But my journey, so it started 20 years ago. It took me four years from the age of 22 to the age of 26. Uh, I meant to check, actually, when I bought my um, first property. Uh, so I'm just going to have a look at that now. Because I can't actually remember when I bought my uh, very first property. Um, and for some reason, it's not coming up. Uh, but I'll have a look later. I can't, I can't find it. But anyway, it should be about 26 years of age. So it took from 22 to 26, and I read every single thing I could get my hands on. Bear in mind, this is like 24 years ago, from 22 to 26. Like, there wasn't that much. You know, there was some, but there wasn't a lot. And I was reading everything and anything. I would read newspapers. I would read the Daily Express because I thought they were experts because in the, in the money section, there must be ex- experts. And how little did I know back then? <laughs> so uh, so when I first got my very, very first house, it was a 40 grand house up in the student area of Leeds. And the idea was that I was actually going to move into that house. 
and uh, rent it to my three friends. You see, it's really funny because I don't feel like a millionaire. I, I don't feel like I've got all this massive property portfolio, and yet I have. And yet that's pretty much what pays for ninety five percent of all our of all our expenses. That's that, that's what it covers everything, right? And it leaves some money at the end, so we don't we never have to work, which is awesome. So. If we, if we didn't do anything else, all that money still comes in. This is why you should be in property. But that first deal that we bought for 40 grand, it, it was two and a half percent, uh, sorry, two and a half thousand pounds deposit on a house. Eee, bygone, they were the days, lad. Uh, sounding old. Five um, percent deposit. I bought it on a, a normal residential um, mortgage. It needed some work doing to it, moved in, moved my friends in, started making enough money, started having beer money, making two, three hundred pounds a month clear. Um, because my friends were renting and obviously I was 26 going out with the lads uh, going out getting drunk spending loads of money that kind of thing so it never really went into um, into uh, into a pot of money to build the next property up but the next property by the way from 26 to the age of 30 when I first started buying so from 26 to 30 I increased my income from 15,000 pounds a year to just less than 100,000 pounds a year in four years flat, I went from fifteen to a hundred thousand pounds. So my task when I was twenty six, and by the way, I spent a lot of money on nights out because that's just who I was at the time. So, uh, so, <laughs> so when I bought that first house, I knew that this was where I wanted to be, and I wrote down a plan of to be a, a to own a million pounds of property because that was my goal at the time in four years flat. That was the plan, and I think I did it in like two and a half years. Because I was I was prolific in those early years of buying property after property after property. And the reason why I was prolific was down to two reasons. The first reason was I went and got a job that took me from 15 grand to 100 grand in four years flat. Awesome. OK. The second reason is that in the time period. So we're talking 98, is it 98 ish, 1998. Through to 2002, property prices went up significantly. But also it's down to a third reason as well. The third reason is that when we were buying, we were buying below market value. It's all below market value, BMV. It's classed as a new thing. It's not a new thing. We've been doing it for 20 years. I don't think I've ever paid. Oh, no, I have once, actually, and I've been beaten for it. Uh, I've not paid full price for property once, except it's one house. So I've not paid full price for property twice. I suppose is the way you say that. And the one that I did, I overpaid, and it's, it's actually still in negative equity, the one that I paid full price for, which is ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so so we always bought below market value. And we would go in, like I remember I bought a house and I walked in and I looked around and I went, yep, yeah, we'll take it. And then we rushed it through. We completed it in maybe three weeks' time. Um, we used, um, um, what do we call them, a uh, bridging company to, to lend the money so we could buy it. And then we'd remortgage it the same day that we completed on it. Do you remember those days with good old Mortgage Express? Um, so we did that. And then when I walked into the house after I'd completed on it and I was looking around and I was like, oh, oh, look, it's got a back door. <laughs> I didn't realize it was a through terrace. In Leeds, we have these back-to-back terraces. We had a back door and it had a backyard. I've not even seen any of that. Um, <laughs> so then I held on to that uh, for four months. Uh, we actually refurbed it, and then we we put it back on the market, and prices were going up. Plus, we refurbed it, and in literally four months' time, I think we made like twenty three thousand pounds on that deal um, because we bought well. We bought in a student area, which at the time there was a lot of demand for property. Not not the same now. That was maybe eighteen years ago. That one, it's not the same now because student demand. They're all going into purpose built flats and that kind of thing. Uh, apartment blocks just for students so you know the the, um, the whole thing has changed that first house by the way uh, that I bought for 40 was at one point valued at 200 it's probably worth about 160 170 now it's in a student area of Leeds but we refinanced up to 200 and we took all that money out and when we took all that money out we put it into more deals and this is the journey that we took to start buying more and more property because I knew that this is where I was this is where exactly I wanted to be I didn't, I didn't want to work. I hated my boss. And by the way, it wasn't just the boss. I just hated all bosses. I've always hated the boss. It's just who I am. I'm just not a person who does well being told what to do. It just um, doesn't, excuse me, it doesn't integrate well uh, in the way I see the world. <laughs> so, um, so we bought the first one. We bought the second one. And basically, we just kept on buying 
Uh, I moved to Swindon for my sins because I got a job uh, with Dale, so I bought a flat down there. Um, we uh, rented that out when I moved back up north. Uh, we bought stuff in Manchester. Uh, we got stuff from like Bellway Homes that they were just coming up to their year end um, because they needed to hit their sales target. We were able to come in and get a 25% discount on um, a couple of their properties there. Um, so we did that and refinanced it, which is really cool. So our 25% deposit, we were able to wash and get back out. So we bought a couple there. We did it for all of us. We still got those and they still rent out um, and the rent's still going up. And the mortgage, which is being paid down slowly, so the gap between the two is is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So um, we've done all sorts of different stuff. We've bought um, we've bought deals. We've bought deals from property sources. We've lease options. We've done rent to rent. We've done guaranteed rent. Uh, we've done pretty much everything a person can do. Wow, a police car! That's like the first time I've heard a police car this year in Spain. It just doesn't happen. Uh, <laughs> 26th of February. So we've, we've literally bought everything. So there's a couple of things that you need to be doing if you want to start this journey. The first thing, like above everything else, before you get educated, before you learn about mortgages, before you read books, the first thing is to get belief. Without that belief that you can do it, like I used to stare out of a window during mathematics and my teacher would say, daydreamer won't amount to anything. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much. That's why I live in Spain and you don't. Uh, so, <laughs> so, um, so belief. Now, belief comes from two places. OK. And, and when I mean belief, I mean confidence. OK. So confidence and belief, they are two different things, but we can put them in the same basket for now. Confidence comes from two areas. One, it comes from knowledge. And two, it comes from experience. If you haven't got the knowledge, you're not going to feel confident and you're not going to have belief about what you're doing. So you need to read up your books, okay, and podcasts and run training courses. And it's not one training course and it's not one coach necessarily that will be the thing that gets you on that journey. But if it's the thing that gets you to the next stage, then that's awesome. So that's knowledge. The second thing is experience. If you haven't got any experience, then you could use a coach to get some experience. You can sign up and go with a joint venture with somebody else. I stay away from joint ventures. They're scared of living bejeebies out of me. Uh, because PGB is his word. Like, uh, joint ventures are a crazy idea. Don't do them, is my, and I, this is not advice, can't give financial advice, but if it was me, I certainly wouldn't be doing any joint ventures. It just doesn't make sense. You've, you, you both come from different areas, you have different outlooks on life. Even if you're twin brothers and sisters, it's like, no, because you want different things. You might, be, you might look the same, but you're not the same, right? So don't do JVs. If you're going to do it, go do it. Do it on your own. If you're going to do it, don't be looking for, well, I'm looking for no money down deals because I don't want to put any money in. Because you've got no money, right? Yeah, but there must be a way for me to get, to borrow the deposit and to put, no, no, you can't do that. Yeah, but I, I, I've been on this training course and I said, if you use two solicitors, it's fraud. Stop doing it. Stop trying to do it. You can't do it. That's why all these rules were put in place, especially after Mortgage Express went bust, um, to stop people buying with no money down. You've got to have some skin in the game. So if that is the case, if you need some skin in the game, let's talk about how you get skin in the game. You work your backside off like I had to. I had two jobs. I worked 40 hours working at Symphony Kitchens in Leeds. Uh, dreadful boss. Uh, at the time, it was a dreadful boss. Looking back now, I, don't, I, I can't remember. But it looked like, like Ned Flanders. Uh, sorry, old boss, if you're listening. Um, I did the eye, folks. So... Symphony Kitchens, and then I worked at William Hill, taking bets over the telephone. Two very low-paid jobs, eight pounds an hour in today's money. Um, two very low-paying jobs. I would work 60, 65 hours a week. And then when I got to age 26 and I got into sales, uh, then I would start increasing that and I started getting paid a salary, not, not paid monthly. But the bottom line for me to start making money in property is that buying more property was I needed cash in order to do it. But that rule has not changed. Right. It's not that you just fall magically into a uh, an idea where you can just borrow infinite amounts of cash and buy infinite amounts. Of money. It just doesn't work like that. And if you think it does, then you're wrong. Like even like lease options, lease options. Oh, well, I just want a lease option. I'm just go for lease options. Oh, look, 20 lease options. Oh, I'm now financially free. It doesn't work like that. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of work. And most people are not prepared to put in the work and then they quit. And then they blame everybody else but themselves because 
they didn't do the work. And it doesn't matter how many times you tell them, they ain't going to do the goddamn work. And then, like, it's hard. It's really hard. Like, life is hard. As Florence Nightingale said, life is hard. But what of it? So what? It's hard for everybody, for goodness sake. So what makes you so different that life shouldn't be difficult for you? It's difficult for me. It's difficult for my wife. It'll be difficult for the little one. And it's through the adversities that we go through as people that make us stronger afterwards. Right? Just the thing that you're going through right now is just the thing that you're going through right now. That's it. Let's put it in context. It's just the thing that you're going through. And after that thing finishes, whatever that is, there's another day and a fresh day and another day and a fresh day and another month and another year and so on. So it is going to be difficult. But you've got to keep on going. You need to earn some cash. I don't care if that's from a business. It could be from self-employment. It could be from a job. It could be from whatever it needs to be as long as it's legal, ethical, safe for you, safe for others, safe for the planet. Right? It doesn't matter what that is, but you've got to start generating cash. And we take the cash and we put that into either we pay down our debt. You've got credit cards it's costing twenty percent a year. Get rid of that, and then you put it into property. Because if you don't put it into property, you're not making twenty percent on property. And if you are, tell me about it. I'd like to know where you make twenty percent on property. Actually, you can make twenty percent in any other way. But anyway, but you need to get rid of your credit card debt. So credit card stuff or a bad debt is stuff that will hang around your neck like kryptonite for the next twenty years. And if you don't do it. Get rid of it. It will still be there. When you look back at how much money you've paid on that credit card, you've paid tens and tens and tens of thousands of pounds on a five grand credit limit. It's crazy. Buy the bullet. Work as hard as you can. That's £500 a month for 10 months. Get to 10 months and then start saving up for your property deals. But you need high income. You need to up your income. And if you're not earning a high income, you see, I meet people and we want like £8 an hour and then we want to be property millionaires. And I'm like, I get why, but... How's that supposed to work? Can it happen? It can happen. Is it a regular occurrence? No, of course it's not. So you need to up your ability to get paid. Uh, And if that means skilling up, become a master at Facebook ads or become a LinkedIn professional or become a drone pilot or whatever that happens to be in order for you to get paid higher money, And that's what you need to do because that higher money will translate into deposits on your next house, help you buy your house, refurb it, the house that you bought below market value, either put it back on the market and refinance it, pull all that money back out and go on to your next one. That is how it's done, folks. That's how we went from zero to hero in 20 years' time with millions of pounds of property. It just sounds even weird saying it because we, we don't say it often enough. Most people actually don't know the journey. But we started off on a 40 grand property and we've gone up to properties worth £300,000, all more or less up in the north, mostly in Leeds. Uh, but those now bring a residual income each and every month. Do we have problems? Of course we do. Do we have tenants that don't pay? Of course we do. Do we have boilers that break down on Christmas Day? Of course we do, because that's just what happens. That's normal. That is, the worst one is for boiler that breaks down on Christmas Day, and they're, well, I've got 10 people coming around, and... I've got um, I've got I've got a, a Christmas Day dinner. It's like I can't do anything. Like, what do you want me to do? If it was your own house, what would you do? If there's no plumbers available, well, it's just not good enough. I want a discount. <laughs> we do get them. So, so the journey from zero to hero it takes time, it takes effort, and it takes a long time because at first you're not moving anywhere. It takes ages, and then suddenly at the end, woof, it goes up, and that's where the results come from. When you look at Warren Buffett's wealth, it goes like that too, and then woof. These last, uh, this last decade, if you look at it in decades for the last, uh, what, six decades or so, it definitely goes like that. So it takes time to build this up. It's not something, you're not going to be financially free after day one, day two, week six. And if you are, you're one of the few that are, have an ability of something that enables you to do that because it's not normal, right? It's abnormal. One of those occasions where not being normal is really good. I don't know what normal is, by the way. So if you're not normal in some way, brilliant, you're normal. (laughs) Because everybody's not normal in some way, right? So that's awesome. So the key is you've got to get started. Like, not uh, not in 10 years' time, not in 20 years' time. You've got to go out and find your deals. Go and have a look for right move. Find out what the cheapest one is. Go and see where you can raise some money from. Go, you know, if if you need £20,000, to buy your first deal, and all you can do is save a £1,000 a month, awesome, in, in 20 months' time, okay, you're going to get your first deal. Do it. Go buy it. Even if it takes you 20 months, awesome. You've got plenty of time, okay? You've got to get on the property market 
you've got to get your first one in. Buy well, buy below market value, add value to it, and you can put it back on the market or refinance it in six to 12 months, depending on the mortgage companies, and bring that money back out and go do it again, and then go do it again, and then go do it to two, and then go do it to four, and then go do it to eight. And this is how you build up your portfolio. All right, I hope that's useful for you today. We will catch up with you tomorrow. Have a great day. Take care. Hey, it's Dan here. Thank you for listening. Really appreciate each and every one of you. Please click like or subscribe to the entire podcast.